Hi there everyone, we are at the Zoological Society of London, ZSL if you're in the know. But we're not in the zoo today, we're not going to be showing you any animals. Instead, we're going to be showing you Emma Milnes, who is one of the librarians here. And we're going to be talking about a really famous person who is associated with the society. This is a famous book he wrote. What's this? This is the first edition Origin of Species by Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin, 160 <laughs> years ago. Very, very famous book. In case you're wondering what he looks like, you've done the business for us here, haven't you, Emma? What have we got here? So here we have got an image of Charles Darwin as a young man and probably as he would have looked when he was walking around here at ZSL. Pretty handsome guy. <laughs> this whole volume, it's a series of portraits of learned men who were working at the same time as Darwin. And it's a volume called the Ipswich Portraits. So you mentioned he's had a bit to do with ZSL yes. over the years. Yeah. Let's go over here and have okay. a look. There's some interesting stuff here. I'm liking these old books. This is a volume of certificates and these certificates are for the fellows that were here at ZSL. And the page that we've got bookmarked is the page that Darwin joined on. He's number 2211 corresponding member, what does that mean? As Charles Darwin has just gone off in this and he's now traveling around South America, he's on the Beagle, he's a corresponding member because he can't actually come in person. Okay, form of recommendation for a fellow of the Zoological Society to be signed by three members at least. He's got four members there, so yes. he's done well. <laughs> October 6, 1831 to be balloted November 3. So they had to yep. vote. Yep, you can't just join. Yep, you have yeah. to be reputable. <laughs> okay, what have we got next? And then this jumps forward in time a mm. little bit. This go. is the minutes from our annual general meeting. Volume two, so yep, early. very early one. So between the first volume that we looked at and here, yep. Darwin has become a fellow. Yep. He's come back from his voyages upon the Beagle and then in 1839, he then becomes a council member. That the following five fellows are elected into the council. Charles Darwin, Esquire, yeah. and four other less famous people. <laughs> and then, then he sits on council for, I think it's about two years, okay. helping make decisions about London Zoo. But it wasn't just making like administrative decisions. He had a little bit to do with sort of science and things at the zoo. That's where we're going next. Have a look at this. This is very, very interesting. What is going on here? <laughs> this is Jenny, the orangutan. She is the first orangutan to go on display here at London Zoo. And this particular image is a lithograph, and we think it's by a man called George Scharf, but this is the Jenny that Darwin comes to see at London Zoo at least three times. There was one occasion in a letter that Darwin writes saying that I've seen Jenny with her keeper and she's being a bit mischievous, and the keeper is trying to to get her to calm down and he says if you calm down Jenny you can have this apple at which point she calms down. So he yeah. was seeing a real intelligence that fascinated him. Yeah something almost human like. I have to say I can't help but notice Jenny's wearing like <laughs> pajamas or something what's going on here? Yeah. Well we we think it's probably so that she could be kept warm she was really really important to London Zoo she was in a heated giraffe house she had a keeper that was dedicated to her beck and call that was assigned to her by council and because she was so special and she probably fits inside of human clothes as opposed to lots of other animals she gets her own outfit isn't that amazing to think i mean obviously jenny wouldn't have known but this one animal played such a role in inspiring some of yeah. the most important scientific thought of the time yeah here we've got another connection to london zoo this is a volume of the zoology of the beagle darwin he comes back from his travels but he has collected so many specimens birds fish mammals that he can't possibly then process all the information himself so he starts asking famous naturalists, uh, so Richard Owen, famous for the Natural History Museum, he asked for his help. But for the birds, he asked the help of a man called John Gould. He was a very famous ornithologist and he worked here at London Zoo and he was our curator of birds. Gould is quite famous at the time in those circles. A lot of people go to him for advice on birds. I imagine being famous <laughs> in bird circles is like quite a niche thing to be famous in, but... 
we'll take it. And what's inside the book here? Inside we have the text which describes the birds that Darwin has brought back from the Voyage of the Beagle. And the text is by John Gould, although it's been edited by Darwin. But then we also have illustrations which are by John Gould's wife, Elizabeth. But the pages that I have bookmarked are the ones that are quite important to us and, well, to everyone really. And these are the famous Darwin's finches. So Darwin brings back these finches from the various islands around the Galapagos and John Gould notices that the beaks are all different to each other. And these are the finches that are thought to have given the idea to Darwin that not everything was just created as it was, that things have evolved to fit their environment. So these illustrations done by Gould's wife, mm. she's using the specimens that have been brought back and she's, yeah. she's using them to do these. Yeah, right. yeah, she was an incredibly talented artist. I think John Gould, he would have helped direct her because he, he did know an awful lot about birds. Yeah. But she must have created almost thousands of yeah. illustrations, not just including these. Well, I hope she wasn't freestyling on the beaks, otherwise it'd be <laughs> a bit of a problem. Might change history. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to end. We're going to end with something a little bit fun. Show the human side of yeah. Charles Darwin. I particularly like these letters that you found here. So in here, we have got a series of letters that were written by Charles Darwin to the secretary of London Zoo, who at the time was a man called Slater. And Slater was another famous bird person. He was um, an ornithologist. And in these letters, Darwin is saying to Slater, this is a great line, I have a most unfortunate weakness, though I strive against it, to copy proper names incorrectly. And here, a lot of us in the library, we like to think of that if we're having a bad day and something's gone wrong, and we like to think that even Darwin couldn't spell everything perfectly. And there's the signature, the famous handwriting. Do you notice the handwriting there? I did notice it, but I didn't want to say anything. Yeah, that's <laughs> Charles Darwin's handwriting. <laughs> writing there too, just quietly. <laughs> Available now. Links in the description. <laughs> we started with a picture of him all young and handsome. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Let's see the more famous old and grisly Darwin that we love. Now you may have seen a picture like this in an earlier video. We'll put it on the screen at the moment. We showed you this picture at the Royal Society. This one looks strikingly similar, but it's not the same. No. This is different. <laughs> Can you spot the difference? Put them side by side, James. Can people spot the difference? You want to put people out of their misery? Da, da, da. Look at that. <laughs> he has a crumpled collar. He's messed his collar up. <laughs> it may have been taken just before the other one that is maybe more famous and someone's come along, probably the photographer, her name's Cameron, and just adjusted it ever so slightly. I like it better. <laughs> this feels like the one you weren't supposed to see. <laughs> this is like the naughty edition. <laughs> Look at this. Darwin didn't want you to see this, but you're seeing it here now. <laughs> Thanks to Emma, look at that. Remind, does that remind you of James when James fixed my collar up a minute ago? <laughs> he did actually, exactly the yeah. same. Yeah, Should have go. done it in the same shot. <laughs> <laughs> times, haven't, times haven't changed. There we go, a famous guy with a long and interesting association with the Zoological Society of London, ZSL. I like saying ZSL, ZSL in case you didn't you got notice. the hang of it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, well done, whoever took this photograph, which yes. we probably know. Probably the most famous Victorian photographer, Julia Margaret Cameron. Yeah. Very fa fantastic photographer. It's very nice to know that we know for sure <laughs> which photograph of Darwin was Darwin's favourite. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what else this confirms. Those eyebrows... He liked them. Like, that wasn't just, like, exaggerated for the sculpture. Have a look. Those, they're serious. Uh-huh.